So our senses are like our taste. What's our second sense? What's another one? Ashlyn? So you have hearing, then you have seeing, you have smelling. So I have taste, hearing, seeing, smelling. Is there anything else I'm missing? Touch. Touch. No, you shouldn't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Touch. So bring it back here. Do we have? Our senses, taste, hearing, seeing, smelling, and touch. So when I tell you that you need to use sensory language to add detail to a writing, I'm asking you to add the senses. Sensory, sense, okay? But I have here as an example of just how to add detail. So when I'm adding detail to something, I'm adding some more little body to it. I'm making it more interesting. So we all have had story starts we've started, right? For the most part, most of us, that we pulled from our chart. In those story starts, right now they're pretty basic. Most of them. To make them more interesting when we start writing more and more and more stuff, we need to learn to put details in there. And so when I was growing up, my dad used to be like, you need to pay attention to the details, the details, the details. He'd say it three times, all every time, every time, every time. So that's what I'm going to say to you. We're adding detail, we're adding detail, and we're adding detail to make our writing more interesting. One way we can make our writing more interesting is we add sensory language into it. So what I have right here is one way of writing something and another way of adding detail to a writing. So I'm going to read you example one, and then I'm going to read you example two. When I read you example two, you're going to describe to me the different details I added. You're going to describe to me if there is sensory language in it, and you're going to describe to me what, which one is more interesting, number one or number two, okay? So number one is I went home, I ate a snack, I did my homework, I played outside. Okay? Right? Thank you. Example two is I stumbled off the bus, arms full of books, dragging my jacket in the dust of the driveway. What a day it had been. Throwing everything on the sofa, I spied my mom's homemade chocolate fudge brownies cooling on the kitchen counter. Just the same. Chocolate and a big glass of milk before tackling my homework. I savored every bite and then whizzed through my math problems, double checking those multiplication drills. I found no mistake. Milk and brownies, the perfect brain food. Tucking away my books, I ran outside to join the neighborhood ball game. Okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Bring it back in. So in this example, there's no sensory language, but in, well, there might be. But the focus was on adding detail. There's detail in it. It's the same story, right? I went home. I ate a snack, I did my homework, and then I went out and played outside. It's the same story. Except one is more detailed than the other one. So when we start our story starts, it's very important that you're not just telling me the basics. You're telling me details. Details, details, details now. So where is an area in this second example where I could have added sensory language? So I added a lot of detail, but where could I have added sensory language? Food. Wesley? I smelled my mom's homemade chocolate. I smelled my mom's homemade, yes, very good. I smelled it. Where else? Where else? Brecken? Yeah, you could say I felt it, like I felt the, the crisp edges of the, of the brownie cooling off. Oh, we're, right? getting soft. we're getting in there. Right? Where else could I have added some sensory language here? Some 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 five senses. Levi? Um, instead of like savored every bite, you could say I enjoyed every bite. You could say I enjoyed every bite, but that's not really a sense. That's just a change of vocabulary, but that's good. You could. Absolutely. Addy?
Yeah, you could say at the end where it says I ran outside to join the neighborhood ball game, you could say I heard the neighbors playing outside and I ran to join the game. You could describe how the air felt Wait, how do you know to you as well. Yeah. All right, London? You could describe the weather and what the weather felt like, whether it was hot or cold. That's using a sense. What's one more thing before I have you start filling out your sheet? Zoe? Um, like it says the books felt very heavy when it came out. Oh, the books felt very heavy in her hands. So there is a sensory language example up here because it felt heavy. So when we add details to our, to our short little story starts, we're going to throw in sensory language. Now you don't want to do it every line, but there is sensory language in this example. It's just tucked in there. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get refreshed on how to use it, when to use it. So on your sheet, what you're going to do is there's three examples. There's short sentence starters. There was a huge crowd at the stadium. You're going to use story starter, or not story starters, sensory language on each line to describe those scenes. So you're going to use sensory language to describe the huge crowd at the stadium or different details about being at the stadium. You're going to use sensory language for the many sounds fill the air at dusk. You're going to use sensory language to describe those sounds. Where it says, my first day of school was exciting. You're going to use sensory language to describe the exciting parts of being at school. Or just describe the school. What did the hallway smell like, right? Different things like that. So that's what you're going to do to finish out our time for the next seven minutes, okay? If you complete this, you're going to keep this in with your writing stuff until tomorrow when we add more details to our story starters, okay?